All right, so I got a bit of a backstory and some disclosure I got to throw your way real quick here. Now, at Fabtech 2017 in Chicago, I was very active on Instagram and Facebook pages for TFS, and I was saying, what do you guys want me to go check out, do, see, show you, whatever the case is. So many people were in those comments daily saying, have you gone to HTP? Can you burn the Invertic 221? Can you check it out? I want to know what you have to say about it. I said, yeah, sure. So I go over there. They've got one on display. It's working. They set me up with some coupons, some filler rod, the gear, the whole works, and they said, have at it. Well, I'm laying down these just absolutely gorgeous stacks on this thing. I'm re just blown away by how much control and precision and everything else that I'm getting out of this little tiny box here. I'm absolutely, you know, impressed. The initial impressions on it were just incredible. Well, the word travels relatively quick through a booth when you walk in there and they find out you have a YouTube channel and you do welding machine reviews and, you know, all the rest of that good stuff. Well, Jeff Nolan, the guy who runs the show at HTP, walks over, introduces himself and says, how would you like to take this machine for a test drive? I said, Jeff, I would love to get some seat time on this machine. However, I will not guarantee you that it will go on to TFS. I will not guarantee you that it's got a, you know, going to get a positive review or anything like that. It has to survive testing and it has to survive student use in our TIG welding classes. Now, most companies, they're usually just like, whoa, students, sorry, that's just going to destroy our machine and whatever the case is. It was nice meeting you. Good luck to you. Well, in this case, Jeff confidently replies, I'm not worried about it. They promptly sent the machine right after that. Well, six months later, we've used it daily. We've pushed it hard. We've set it up in the classes, in the hands of students, and they have done their best and their worst at it. And it is, it is just absolutely flawlessly survived. But I do have six months worth of time here. I've got lots of things that I do and don't like about this machine, and that's exactly what we're going to go over in today's honest review of the HTP Invertig 221. Now, if I was given only one word to describe the HTP Invertig 221 machine, it would be generous. This is a very feature-rich machine with functions that you don't normally find in machines of this price tag. Normally, you got to spend about two or three times what this machine retails for to get half of those features. But that's only on the inside of the function menu. But what about the hardware that comes with it? Your pedal, your leads, your, your torch, all the rest of that good stuff. Well. First off, we have a really nice, very comfortable sewing machine style pedal, which are becoming very popular. There are a lot of people are starting to like them, but it's extremely responsive, and that's one of the things that I absolutely love about this. I like a good pedal with some really good responsiveness to it, and it's also very comfortable. This machine comes with it straight out of the box. The ground lead, this is huge. This is a massive, capable ground lead that comes with it. And this is, I mean, my hand size or my glove size is 2XL, and this is the size of my hand. This will clamp onto just about anything. That is a very generous feature. But most of all, this lead, this torch assembly, this everything is from CK Worldwide. That is an extremely generous feature. But the most impressive thing about it, this machine's on right now. It's running. And if we be quiet for a second here, Maybe you can, maybe you can't hear that fan. But you know what? Let's actually take some of this away from here out of the equation. Let's actually take my microphone off and let's, uh, you know, plug in the ambient mic here and see what the normal shop sounds that we have to deal with here and kind of give you an idea of how quiet this machine actually is. Now I've got the ambient mic going again. You can hear everything else around me as it's going on. And uh, I'm going to show you how it sounds when you weld. I don't know about you, but I could hear everything else, and this machine was not bothering me at any point. And as soon as I'm done welding and it starts cooling, the fan drops right back down into idle mode and keeps on running. I really love that feature. But let's talk some more about what else it does. Now this machine is actually very feature rich like I mentioned earlier. We have a few different modes which we'll go over. We have stick mode, we have 2T and 4T mode, which 2T is basically your standard welding mode, which you can program it. Our TIG spot timer is actually one of those that I definitely want to point out here because this is a really cool function. Some of these machines get it close, this one gets it dead on. But either way, we're going to set this up for 100 amps and then we're going to program the amount of time that we want it to actually run. That would be this time set right here. Now we can go as low as 0.1 seconds and all the way up to 10 seconds of of a spot time. So in this case, I'm actually going to set it up to only one second for spot time because that's generally speaking about all I really need in uh, 
in a spot timer. Now, our low amperage or our uh, terminating amperage, I'm going to set to 50%, actually. The uh, very simple uh, taper out of it so it's not so violent. Then we have our pre-gas and our post-gas setting. So what basically happens is as soon as you point it in here, you step on the pedal, it fires in for exactly one second and then shuts off. What I mentioned before is this machine is so smooth when it comes to doing that, and that's incredible. So let's get this uh, set back over to 2T uh, mode, which is pretty much all of the regular uh, welding mode that you would end up doing with this machine, unless you unless you run into like 4T operations. Again, we got a video on that if you want to check out what the difference is. But the encoder in the middle pretty much sets all of your different controls and your amperage, and the function button toggles through all of the options within the mode. So in 2T mode, we have the ability to set our downslope, we have our... Uh, pre-flow, we have our post-flow, we have all that, and it's all up on that menu right there for, with all those symbols on it, but let's actually see how it welds. This is some stainless work that we pulled off onto a different episode all about stainless steel, or at least the secret to stainless steel, and I was using the HTP the entire way through that episode, and you can see how ridiculously smooth this arc is, and how controlled it is. But now let's check it out on some regular mild steel on some very fine precision work. Now this is super zoomed in here. That filler rod diameter is 0.45. It's tiny tiny stuff but you can see that we have a nice buttery smooth perfect arc the entire way through it and of course I've got to always check out my machines or test out machines on tubing because I do a ton of tubing work here and you have to have that nice perfect controlled arc in order to weld tubes I mean or at least it's very helpful and it makes it you know a much better experience out of it and this one delivers zero fits the entire way through it perfect buttery smooth arc this is stuff that we usually dream of having now we'll hop ourselves into the pulse functions now to turn this on just hit the pulse button and it brings up your frequency now this very generous 999 pulses per second is the maximum on this one the lowest is actually 0.1 or one tenth of a pulse per second so i'm actually going to set this up to three pulses per second press the pulse again we'll get our duration how much percent on time we want in this case i'll go with 20 percent which is typically where i have it when i do now we'll toggle the function menu and we'll go over to our background or where we want it to go down to in this case i'm going to set to 50%. So let's hear it. Now that pulser is pretty much right on point, just where I like it. Not too loud, not too violent with its pulses, very smooth, very nice. Now I'm pretty sure you want to hear what 999 pulses per second sounds like, so here it is. But fair warning, this is extremely high pitched, and if you are squeamish to that, you might want to either skip ahead or just turn your volume down. So here we go. I mean, yikes. <laughs> How many of you actually made it through this far? This is nuts. Now that's all fine and dandy as far as DC is concerned. And to be very honest with you, I personally believe that just about anybody can nail a DC uh, cycle or a DC mode on a machine. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to screw up, right? It's only positive and negative, right? But this machine absolutely kills it. I love it. It's fantastic. But where I really want to see a machine excel, or one of those things that I absolutely want to see some serious, precise control out of, is on the AC cycle. Now, this particular machine on the AC cycle, we get into not only some really fantastic control, but we also get into some hidden menu items that are really really fantastic for control. My favorite stuff is aluminum, so to engage AC mode, just click the AC mode button and your frequency immediately pops up. Now we have adjustable frequency from 20 to 200 hertz, which is pretty good range. I really actually, it's, uh, I don't really use much above and beyond that. I usually stick around 120. Now if we press the set AC mode again, we'll, we'll switch over to the balance side. This one gives you adjustable AC balance from 10 to 90. Now this machine actually displays the negative side of the balance wave, just like many of the American machines do so don't get that confused with uh, many of the other ones which display the positive so either way we set it up let's get this rolling and see what it can do that is one seriously smooth wave now this does look like the pulsar is actually on right now but it is not uh, that's just the frequency interfering with the frame rate of what the uh, camera is shooting this is just a straight AC wave just the same settings that we did earlier and it is butter this thing is incredibly smooth 
but let's switch over to get some fine control. Of course, rocking that edge weld like I absolutely love to do when testing out machines. This thing nails it. Not one flicker, not one problem, not one issue. Just precision, fine control, and of course, rocking that pedal out like you need to do on an edge weld. This thing just nails it. So let's switch over to some advanced AC welding here. This is, uh, this is just a normal everyday weld that we would lay down like with any regular AC settings. But what we want to get into here is an AC bias or an adjustable amplitude of each wave as in positive or negative adjustable amplitude. If you hold the set AC button down until you see the EN negative sign pop up, you can adjust the amplitude of the negative wave. So in this case, I'll set it to 70%. Now when we lay down a weld on this one, you notice that we have the full power on the positive end, which means we get a big giant etching zone, and then we have the less power on the negative side, which this means that we're basically going to get a higher puddle, a little bit more freeze on that as we're rolling along, and it basically helps you control the heat or the amount of uh, penetration that we get into. Now if we switch on the EP side, if we hold the set AC button past the EN side, it'll actually pop into ENP mode, which stands for positive. If we knock this down to 70%, we're going to reduce the amount of positive side or the cleaning side that we have on it, but maintain that negative side to actually penetrate and get really deep in there. Now this is going to result in less of an etching zone and more penetration because we have more power on the negative side of the weld. This is an incredible feature. Now we might have a dedicated episode on this function if you want to learn more about it later on. Now to exit the AC bias mode, hold the set AC button until it cycles through and the AC mode light stops blinking. That's the indicator that it's off. Now that AC bias control or that asynchronous wave as most people know it or whichever way you know it is a feature that you do not find in machines of this price tag. That is absolutely insane. However, I do feel it is a solution or a compromise to another issue that I thought was one of those things that bothered me in the beginning, but at the same time, maybe it didn't. But that's where we're going to get into my likes and my dislikes about this machine. Now, I was initially bummed at the fact that this is only a square wave machine. Sometimes I like to have those controls or that, that ability to change the wave from, you know, maybe the square wave, which is pretty much a standard, uh, to even including something like the triangle wave. The triangle wave is really great for having like a really nice frozen solidified puddle. It's a fantastic thing, but I was initially like, well, why is that not here? And that was kind of a gripe until you learn and understand the AC bias controls or the asynchronous wave, which is absolutely incredible. So I thought it was initially a gripe or maybe a compromise, but the fact that the AC bias is there that offers so much more control, that is a major plus in my book. Now the second thing has to do with the size of the case. Now I love the fact that it's so small. I love the fact that it's lightweight. It's fantastic, but the only problem is is when you shrink a machine down, of course its display size shrinks down, and with the shrunken display, we have to run into all those hidden menus. Now the hidden menus were initially a complaint. It was a little bit difficult, it was a little challenging, it was a little strange to try and find all those you know, different hidden functions and whatnot, but the biggest thing is that this user manual is so extremely well written, extremely detailed, and they leave nothing out of it. Nothing to discover, nothing to worry about. It's all very, very plain English, straight up, very well understood. And, you know, again, I thought it was annoying at first, but once you figure out the menus and you figure out the navigation, this thing is a breeze. So it's not really that big of a deal. My only real complaint is actually up front. It's due to the same thing as the case size being so small. See, the line that goes in to actually feeds the argon to the torch is not an internal line and it's not quick release. What that basically means is when you try to assemble this, you have to have that wrench handy and the space gets really, really tight. That means that you actually have to attach the argon lead to the machine before you attach the dense connector for the torch cable itself. And then once you add the other torch cable or the negative lead or your ground lead and then the pedal, it gets really cramped in there. So if you plan to actually, uh, like I do, take the leads off and everything else like that to store it, this can kind of be a bit of a pain to do. Uh, it would be fantastic if there was a quick release there, but then again, it's not a deal breaker, but it is a complaint. I really wish there was something a little bit easier for removal because I do store my machines without the leads attached. But other than that, that's pretty much it. This thing is rock solid. All right, so that's about going to wrap it up for this episode. And I want to thank you guys for watching as always. And I must absolutely give a huge shout out to HTP for making such an awesome machine and sending this out to us and being very, very patient throughout the entire time that we have used it or put it through all of the testing. Now, if you're very serious about getting into welding or you want to start out with something absolutely fantastic, this machine absolutely gets my recommendation. It's been plugged into my wall pretty much all day long and it's been one of my daily use machines. I have, well, quite a few of them and I rotate them regularly 
manually, but this one is pretty much always plugged in. It's a fantastic machine, and I definitely suggest that you get one of these because this will take you very far. Now, if you need to get in contact with us, hit me up on the FabricationSeries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator, and Facebook.com slash the Fabricator Series. And I check the description below if you want to get uh, more of that info or need to see anything that we got going on, the TIG welding classes, gear tools, everything we recommend, and all the rest of that good stuff. We'll see you guys on the next episode.